Perfect. Welcome everyone to the 13th meeting in 2016 of the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee. Everyone present is pleased reminded to switch off their mobile phones. No apologies have been received. Agenda item one. The first item today is to seek the agreement of the committee to consider agenda item four, its approach to the Scottish Government's draft climate change plan, RPP3, and item five, the appointment of the Tenant Farm Commissioner in private. Are we all agreed? Yes. John, you're... Convener, why item five has been taken in private, please? Um, it's, be, it's really to just give feedback on the uh, Tenant Farm Commissioner as a result of me attending the uh, meeting last week. They, they have already passed forward the recommendation to the government, so it's just an observation on my behalf. But, but that, that's information that would be benefit from discussing in public, presumably. Uh, yes, uh, I, would, I would rather give that uh, uh, item in private. Um, uh, there will be a record made of what I said, uh, but I'd like to give that in the first instant in private so you're aware of my thoughts on it. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mike. Public consumption, I think, that it was clear that the meeting that you attended was in public session. So Co all that was in public session, wasn't Correct. it? Correct. Yes, John. That further adds to my confusion why we would thereafter discuss it in private. Um, I think I'd like to do it in private so I can be, to be frank and explain what the process that I came up with and the line of questioning, um, and I'd like to do that in private, and, and make it, we will make a, a record of my uh, observation and, and the committee's thoughts on it afterwards. I would rather do it that way, if I may, please, John. Okay. Thank you. So I ask, are we all agreed on that matter? Agreed. Thank you. The second item on for consideration is two negative instruments as detailed on the agenda. These instruments relate to agricultural holdings. The committee will consider any issues that it wishes to raise in reporting to the Parliament on these issues. Members should that note that no motions to annul have been received in relation to these instruments. Are there any comments from members relating to these instruments? I note there are no comments uh, uh, received. So, therefore, is the committee agreed that it does not wish to make any recommendation in relation to these instruments? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the third item on the agenda is the committee is invited to note the draft memorandum of understanding between the Scottish Government and the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, as outlined in <coughs> Paper 2. Oh, I seem to have gone off. Uh, sorry, in Paper 2. Uh, sorry, members. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, members should be aware that since the paper was issued, it's emerged there have been no requirement for the committee to report the MOU to the Parliament and for the Parliament to formally approve it. The Parliamentary Bureau, Bureau has therefore referred the document to the committee for note only. This is because the Scottish Parliament is not named as a party to the document. Members will note that the Memorandum of Understanding states that the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency accounts and annual report will be shared with Transport Scotland, enabling them to be laid before the Scottish Parliament. Also, if required to do so, the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency will submit relevant reports to and appropriate officials will appear before the Committee of the Scottish Parliament regarding the excise and functions relating to the Coast Guard and the safety of ships and seafarers in Scotland. I would invite any comments from members on the Committee on the Memorandum of Understanding. We have two, uh, we have, well, we have more than two. Uh, Stuart, if you'd like to start, please. Um, the, it, it's just a technical point that I don't think should lead us to take any action, but it'd be useful to put on the record. Uh, at 3.2, uh, Scotland is defined as uh, being uh, as defined in the Scottish Adjacent Waters Boundaries Order of 1999, uh, which in essence uh, uh, defines the seaward limits uh, as 55 degrees 26 minutes 37 seconds north, uh, 6 degrees 34 minutes 40 uh, seconds west. Uh, however, um, for that is only for certain purposes related to fisheries. The other piece of legislation which matters is the Continental Shelf Territorial Sea 
order of 1987, uh, which uses a different set of coordinates to define the border. So there is an area of, and this is my approximation, 6,000 square miles, which for purposes of fishing uh, is uh, not in Scottish waters, but for the purposes of exploitation of oil and gas, is in Scottish waters for the legal purposes. Now, it's worth making the point that the excluded area related to in the Memorandum of Understanding is not an area in relation to the oil and gas uh, uh, law that would be applied by Scottish law enforcement agencies and courts, is not an area where we have legislative competence in this parliament, and therefore it's proper. We merely note that difference. I personally would have preferred to see the memorandum of understanding, which is no legal force, but represents something serious, uh, to, to talk uh, about the 1987 order. But having made that point, I don't propose the committee responds to it in any way whatsoever. Uh, your point is made. Uh, sorry, was John Mead? Yes. It was just, in light of your opening remarks, it was just to clarify, I mean, that we've been, it says here in the paper, the action, the committee is invited to consider whether it is content to recommend that the Parliament approve the MOU. Is that actually correct? No, that's, that's, right. changed. That that has, that's changed. That's changed because it's really, we're asked, being asked to note, note it. it. Right, and, that's right. Okay. And so it's really to say that we've seen it coming through. Thank you. That's fine. Just on record, that, that in fact, the... Um, the Bureau, this was raised in the Bureau on Tuesday of this week, and it was made clear that we could, if we wished to, I'm not saying we should, I'm just saying that we, if we wished to, we could produce a report and it could, there could be a short debate on the floor of the Chamber. But I, I, considering the memorandum itself, I don't think there's any need to do that, but I think it should be noted, for, certainly for the, for the public, that, that we have that uh, power if we, wished, if we wish to do it. Okay, thank you. Jamie, do you want to... The first question I think uh, uh, John Mason asked, which was just, we're, just to clarify, we're being asked to consider it rather than approve or yes. give consent to. That's fine. So, just a, uh, therefore, any questions we have, are, who are they directed to, or any points of clarification that we have, who are they directed to the Transport of Scotland or the Scottish Government? We would write to Transport, to transport okay. Scotland if there are specific points that you'd like so to may I, may I, for the purpose of the record, then ask that on the uh, section four of the operation of the MOU, which is uh, page three of the body of the appendix, um, it, it says that uh, Scottish Government ministers may appoint a named individual to the MCA advisory board. My question would be uh, who would make that decision and by what process they would follow. There's no requirement to answer that question here or now, but it's just for the record. It'd be interesting to know. We'll write as a result of that question and ask what the process will be. Just, uh, uh, just to make sure that we do actually, yeah. you know, that, that we encourage the government to uh, make full use of the MOU by actually appointing someone and sending somebody or a deputy to those those meetings that the board has, uh, so that we know what, what's 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 happening at the at that agency. Um, and the only other point I had was just a general point on these MOUs and that, um, and I think, uh, for, again, for the purpose of public record, is that they seem to be following a slightly different format in terms of the role of the committee and the parliament in each of the MOUs, and perhaps the clerks may take that up later. Okay, um, I'm, I, that, that is definitely noted. Uh, Rhoda. Um, on um, the appointment of the person to the board. I'm wondering, is that is that person going to be the route for consultation with the Scottish Government, or is there another route for consultation? If there's someone on the board, what is their role? Are they going to be feeding back information, or is there a separate, another kind of working in tandem consultation well, process? The committee's content. What we'll do is we'll write an, and ask about the process of election, uh, selection of that person and how the Scottish Government feeds into it. We could, we could definitely do that. Sorry, uh, John, you wanted to... It was, it was more a comment. Um, there be, might be opportunities further down the line for this committee to, to take evidence from someone who is appointed. And, of course, where they in place would be able to do that in relation to the shocking situation in the Murray Firth regarding ship-to-ship -ship transfer of oil, where there's a dearth of uh, interest, apparently, from the Scottish Government on this. This is indeed a reserve matter, but the communities, as you'll be fully aware, convener, are deeply concerned, and I hope you would join in that concern that there is about the, the, the potential environmental disaster this could bring about, and how, if we did have someone there, we'd have an opportunity to discuss that. 
Thank you, John, for, for that very uh, good constituency point that you raised. And I, I will try, if I may, to say that uh, it, it's not for me to answer that here, um, but I, I think the process and how the Coast Guard Agency feeds back to the Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Government is a thing that we can raise with, with the government. Mm -hmm. Just on that point. Yeah. If you look at paragraph 3.5, pollution response operations or the potential of pollution is, are not part of this memorandum of understanding. So it's not with the competence of this. Right. Uh, I'm just reading that again just to remind myself. Yeah, Stuart, sorry, do you want to? Um, it might be useful to look at section 4.6. If required to do so, the MCA would submit relevant reports to and appropriate officials would appear before the committees of the Scottish Parliament regarding the exercise of functions related to the Coast Guard. So that seems all encompassing uh, and the safety of ships and sea seafarers in Scotland. And I think that ultimately would be quite a useful thing for us to bear in mind here forth. I, th I think that, sorry, just before you come back in, I think the point is, is, is that once this person is appointed, it is very clear that we can ask them to come to the committee. And if it's the committee's wish to ask them to come, then, then we will make, I will make every step to ensure that happens. Sorry, John, you want to come It was back? just to pick up on, on, on Mike's point there. Um, of course, there'll be consultation on strategic, strategic priorities and what would be more strategic than um, protecting the Highlands and Islands main industry, which is tourism and our environment. So um, I would suggest we need to be ambitious. And and, and John, I, I take your point, and you've made it twice, if I may, on, on that particular issue. And Richard, I'm going to let you come in there. As Thank well. you. Um, based on the fact that we could ask the official to come along, we could also ask the Maritime uh, to come along too, agency to come along too, because it would be possibly interesting to, uh, based on the point that my colleague has made just a, a minute ago about the ship to ship transfer of oil, um, it could be a a subject of something which uh, we want to get into. I absolutely believe and I, uh, that, that that's right, and we can ask the committee, uh, the committee can ask if they so want that, that, that the Coast Guard agency come along and also the person appointed by the Scottish Minister. So rather than uh, delay this, as we're being asked to note it, is the committee happy that we write and ask for the process for selecting the person to go on to the uh, uh, agent or represent the agency. Fina, that we be notified of who is appointed in due course. Okay, and that we be notified and at the appropriate time look for somebody to come to the committee to explain the work that's going on. Is, is everyone content with that? Can I ask that you, 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 you therefore, the, uh, as a committee, we are happy we've noted the memorandum of understanding. Right, that concludes the public part of the meeting. And I'd now like to spend briefly to allow us to move into private session.